So uh, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm from Airstream. Thanks for making the time to come to our chat. And uh, we are, are honored to have Brian, who is the designer of this cool product behind me, which is called the Basecamp. And Brian's going to tell us a little bit about his background and the inspiration for this product. Yep. So Brian, I'll, I'll pass you this microphone that is you only can. for video recording. It looks like we're going to sing. But yeah. We could do a duet. Um, no, yeah, well, that would be terrifying. Um, I, my name is Brian Thompson. Thank you, first of all, everybody, for coming to watch this. And thank you for watching online. We are Instagram Live, so if you want to give a shout-out to your mom. Hi, Mom. There, She could be watching. Who knows? Um, oh, well, then she's definitely watching. So is mine. She's watching from above. But um, um, no, my background is car design. Um, and uh, this talk today is really just, it's very informal. If you want to interrupt me, ask questions, please do. Um, my background is automotive design, and the topic of the talk is really about design inspiration and the story of how this uh, base camp became a thing. Um, and the takeaways from the conversation are really two things. One, um, we're, everything we do is connected in the craziest ways. It's so unlikely that this thing is standing here and, uh, when I think back on how it happened. Uh, and what I find the best way to be creative is to cheat and make mistakes. And those are the two things that I'll uh, cover today and then open it up for questions uh, that I hope you will, hope some of these will inspire some questions because there's a lot of crazy, crazy stuff. So without further ado, um, so my background is cars. Uh, I started at Nissan Design uh, in 2000, uh, almost 18 years ago. And the, the very first thing I wanted to do uh, when I got to Nissan was design a trailer for Airstream because <laughs> I, I always loved designing uh, cars, but I, I had a love for camping trailers my whole life. Um, to become a car designer, I had to drop out of college uh, when a guidance counselor told me that uh, car design was a pipe dream, moved to France, and lived in a tiny camping trailer in the south of France in Montpellier, and would sneak onto trains to find my way to car studios until I found one that would uh, teach me how to become a car designer. And that's how I became a car designer, living in a tiny little trailer. And um, so I, I really wanted to do a trailer for Airstream. I, I never could afford one as a young man, but I wanted to create one. So um, I wrote a letter to Airstream uh, when I started at Nissan, and I said, I'd love to do a Nissan-Airstream collaboration. Um, well, that letter did just yeah, it went off, and I made a model, and I sent it off, and it went into the void, and I didn't hear back uh, for three years. Uh, and so one day I got a call from the new president of Airstream, <laughs> and named Dickie Regal, and he said, uh, I just took this position uh, as the president of Airstream, and I looked at my predecessor's desk, and there's a letter from you. And uh, he says, tell me about this letter. <laughs> and the letter was open, but they, no one had ever responded. And, I, and by then, I was working on, you know, Titan pickup truck and had kind of forgotten about the letter. And I was like, oh, well, well I want to design an Airstream. You know, let's, let's do a Nissan Airstream collaboration. And um, that's what we did. Um, they, believe it or not, they, they, Dickie loved the idea. And uh, we got together and we did a base camp before this one. And the design ethos for the base camp came from infusing Nissan Xterra DNA with Airstream DNA and taking the classic uh, Airstream shape and, and form vocabulary, uh, but infusing that with a very rugged off-road, uh, you know, designed to get beat up. It looks better when it's dirty than it does when it's clean aesthetic. And that's where the base camp came from. Uh, it was penned by a very good designer named Steve Moneypenny, and I helped usher it to, to life. And that product, while it was pure to concept, uh, it, it, it was... It wasn't as viable product as this was in the sense that it was really a base camp. I mean, it didn't have a bathroom. It didn't have anything in it. It was just a uh, kind of like a, uh, you know, like a base camp somewhere you would sleep in. Um, so fast forward uh, again, you know, after a couple of years, that product uh, was on the market and Airstream called me and said, we want to do another base camp, but we really want to push it this time. We want to evolve the aesthetic. So I came on to design this one. And having learned uh, what I learned in the car industry about what works and what doesn't work, and having learned by then you know, what really works in camping and what doesn't, and sleeping in camping trailers as I had, um, we designed this product. And so where the, the root of it will always be this sort of Xterra uh, Airstream aesthetic, this is an evolved version of that, where um, it's, it, you, know, you take a company like Airstream that has this massive brand and iconic history, but the question I often get when I say I design for Airstream is that people always say, oh, they still make those. And, and that's because a lot of people don't know that because they've been making the same thing so true to what they've been making for so long, people often think the new ones are the old ones. 
And so the challenge here was how do you make it feel like an Airstream and be pure to the honest and the brand and the love for the brand, but take it in a new direction. And that's what this, this product is supposed to do. Uh, that's hopefully what it, you know, it fi finds a place in the hearts of people because it, it does that. It's, you know, it's still handmade, it's still made like an Airstream, but the form vocabulary uh, is very much, you know, uh, from an automotive designer like me that, you know, the proportions and the stance the car has, you know, the trailer, I even call it a car. <laughs> the, the trailer has a stance like an automobile does. You know, it looks good on the road. It doesn't look like it's going to tip over and, and a lot of that goes into the styling of it. But the, um, the iconic elements are still the materials, you know, and the way it's made is true to the, to the, to the actual uh, uh, design ethos of it. But those, you know, when you, when you design something like this, um, it's very easy to get lost in, in sort of, um, you know, your vision and not designing it for the person it's for. And I think when you do that, that's how you go astray and you, and you make something that people don't really want. And I think with a product like this, um, you know, there's a lot of time, let's say it this way, um, the time I spent as a young, dirty, <laughs> poor designer living in my trailer was really when this was designed. You know, if you think about that, like I, I wouldn't have known at that time that I was researching. Really, that's what it was. It was design research. And I talked to a couple today here uh, uh, that live in a van and they go all over the world and they have a van over in Europe and they have a van here. And, there, and I think that, that when you do, when you like get out of the world you live in, um, in the normal world and you, and you sort of uh, change direction, that's when you have these breakthroughs in creat creativity and, and design. And so that's what I mean by when I say everything is connected. It's like if I had stayed at Arizona State studying architecture um, and listen to that guidance counselor, I, I never would have, you know, had that breakthrough to like, you know, live in that trailer in France and, and this wouldn't be here today. You know, th this product wouldn't be here because it, it had to come from that time of being very uncomfortable. And so uh, that's what I mean when I say everything is connected in these strange ways. And a lot of times, you know, when you're working in a corporate environment, as many of us do, it's really difficult to get the leaders of the corporation to buy off on something that sounds like a boondoggle, right? Because it's like, why would you go out and go camping or do something like this outpost event uh, when you don't really know what the results are that day, right? You can't put a PowerPoint together and say this and this and this are what the products are going to come out of it. But what happens is, you know, design seeds and creativity seeds start to uh, uh, germinate and, and the creativity percolates and then down the road things like this come out of it. Um, case in point, one of the coolest projects we worked on, uh, I worked on in the car industry came from sleeping in the camping trailers that when you one of the beautiful things about Airstream is when you go inside, it changes color because it's aluminum. And so if you're wearing a blue shirt, the trailer turns blue, right? Like I noticed this morning waking up inside, as the sun came up, the trailer's color changed because it's not like black plastic inside, right? It's aluminum inside as well, so it changes. And I took that inspiration for um, a car I was working on where the digital content inside the car uh, came from your Facebook page or your Instagram page, and the car itself changed. And that inspiration came from the literal way that the Airstream changes color, but we di I did it in a digital way. And I think when you think about where the car industry is going, and I, I don't know, do I, are people here car fans or is it mostly, out, or is there any car fans here? Okay, great, okay, good, okay, good. I'm in, I'm in friendly territory. So you, even better. My favorite thing I ever worked on at Nissan was the, uh, uh, oh, okay, so everybody here is, we're all friends. I could actually just sit down, um, which <laughs> I'd actually like to do because it's better. Um, so, um, so the, okay, little background on my favorite projects. I did the Titan pickup truck interior. Um, the last thing I did before I left Nissan was the Nissan MV2500 cargo van, the big van. So the things I design are these, like, boxes right these big beastly boxes and and i love working on those products because a they're everyday people cars like i've never worked on like a, a 350z or like a, a ford gt or a sports car I, like, maybe someday but that's not where my passion is the passion is in the box right and i love these uh products that look better when they're dirty like i love chris's truck here it's like it's like chris is like he's like the live version of the action place that action figure you had as a kid but he just grew up and became that guy right like like that and even the way of the wheel is so perfectly poised it's like i love yeah it's nice it works i love things like that and um so i love to design things like that and um what i think is interesting in the car industry uh is that every so everything right now is talking about autonomous cars you know you hear about this cars are able to drive themselves it's a real thing it's happening i mean the cars are able to do this but there's a spirit there, a love for driving that I hear that we don't want to lose. We don't want to lose um, the human 
connection to cars, right? When you, you know, there are people that say, I don't care about cars. I don't, I don't really care, love cars. But that same person will still say, I'm going to go take a drive to clear my head. And it's the driving. You know, you guys know, you, you, you live in a van, two vans. And I, the driving has got to be such a big part of it, of that, you know, they're open road and you can go anywhere you want. And um, I think it's interesting time in cars because I have this history of doing trailers in cars and now they're sort of merging because in a world where cars can drive themselves, uh, people can face each other like this in a car. You don't have to all be, you know, it's really strange when people that, that we all face one direction in a car, right? Like, there, there's nowhere else that people do that, right? Like, 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 if I just suddenly, like, started talking to you guys like this, that'd be really weird. But we accept that in a car because we've had to drive. But we haven't had, we don't have to drive anymore. So one of the cool things happening in car design is that the uh, social space is changing. And it's becoming more like an Airstream, which I think is so weird because I spent this whole life, like, designing and wanting to design trailers even more than what my paying the bills job was, you know, sketching Altimas and Sentras and things like that that are, you know, mainstream cars. But now I'm finding, again, back in this theme of everything being connected, all of this work that I did uh, designing trailers is now becoming relevant in the car industry. Uh, but one thing I did want to say, uh, especially to the diehard car people, um, I don't think anybody's coming to take the steering wheel away. I think we could have a whole conversation about that on another topic, but the... Um, the steering wheel, uh, you know, I think there'll be two types of driving. Driving you do because you want to do, clears your head, love driving, go for a drive, and then driving you do for commuting, and there's so much more you can do that feels like this, you know, the social space of cars. Um, so, you know, back to the, the, the base camp itself. Um, you take these things that almost become tropes in, in car design, stance, proportion, form of and you put it in a new kind of product like a trailer. That's what makes this product look different than another uh, trailer on the road. It, it feels like it's got a good presence. Um, but then the integrity of the materials, that's one of the things that separates Airstream from any other brand is that they, they have this commitment to always being pure and, and, and real and handmade. And so if you fuse those together, you have something that's kind of new. And so um, it was kind of cool for me coming out here because I got to sleep in the base camp and this is the first time I slept in the desert in the base camp. Now there's a lot of sleeping and the prototypes that you do in controlled environments and you you know you want to understand the space before you do it but it was really funny last night because I noticed like the things that I like you ever been in a space where you're like who the hell designed this and like I had a moment last night and I was like oh oh yeah it's me so I gotta take a note <laughs> of how, how to make this better we got what I figured out is we have to come up with a prop for that little door back there so that it can open up and let uh, air in and but it's funny to have that moment you know for the first time in a, in a product like this so um, that's, you know, really the, my background with Airstream is, is, comes from that love of it. But I, I like these topics to be more conversational. I'd love to just open it up to questions. If you guys have questions about camping trailers, Airstream, the brand, cars in general, you know, please, you know, let me know if there's, if you have. Any. Yes, Chris. What's the thing that you like most about this uh, base camp? Oh, man. Yeah, well, yeah, there's definitely an Easter egg, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell that story. <laughs> <I'm, I'm there. laughs> so I'll tell, I'll tell a PG-rated version. Uh, my, my favorite thing about the... Yeah, <laughs> putting me on the spot. Well, he asked, and we're live, so I'm going with it. Um, the, the thing I love most about the base camp is that it, um, because it takes the heritage and it pushes it forward, and it's small. I love little like little tiny campers and trailers and I mean it's 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 small enough that you could like um you you can imagine yourself in it and it's not t terrifying as a commitment and I think a lot of a big trailer is a big commitment for a lot of people so I love this the tidiness of it um the 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 easter egg is that the you know the the the, the little back door is a space so that if you're if uh, you're sleeping back there and you um, you want to have somebody come over, but you don't want them going through the side door, they can always sneak in the back door. And <laughs> so it's a little love nest in the back, but that's what it's supposed to be. Technically, we can say it's for watching the rain if you're lying in there. It's a romantic space. So, but um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Unless I'm camping with him. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Anyway, but um. Oh, that's a great question. Like in, um, you mean in, in like um, areas where people camp yeah, or on the road? Sometimes you bring the big airstream, and it's always all about, well, that's the center. That's oh, the center interesting. Of the camp, right? And the tents and everything mm -hmm. kind of scatters around it. How does the base camp 
Yeah, that's a great question because there's something in, in the way you set up the question that I hadn't realized, but you're right. When an Airstream arrives, it, it becomes uh, an attention point, right? Because it's this shiny aluminum beacon, right? And it, and it gathers. I always feel like Basecamp's more like one of the guys. Like it's, 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 it definitely has that, that sort of a luminescence that only aluminum can have, but it's more like it, it wants to be dirty, right? It, it, it lo to me, it looks better when it's beat up. I told um, Andrea that she just bought one. I can't wait to see hers when it gets its first like battle scar, right? So I feel like it's more of that, like, you know, um, it, 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 it's like if it went to a party, it would be wearing clothes like we're all wearing as opposed to like the really high end chic stuff. And that's, that's base camp. So I feel like it's more of the scene. Yeah, it really is. And, um, you know, and I, I, I always thought like, you know, I hope that there's a sort of a cottage industry around people putting like racks on the sides of like a pack mule, you know, like I'd love to see that, you know, people sort of start customizing it and, you know, doing this kind of stuff that with it after it over time. Yeah, that's what it's definitely designed to do. I like mm. the, the social aspect inside too. It, it, it looks like an observation post. Yes. And you have that roundabout seating. There's plenty of seating in there. You could have a lot of mic this wheel. It's huge. Yeah. And I can't, socialize like you can yeah i love that that's the theme the social because that's that's what it is is a social space and the panorama window that's exactly what that's designed to do is that you you know you're in the you're in the function space you're in the kitchen right but you're and that's where you spend a lot of time you know like either you're cutting either whether you're doing kitchen stuff or like you know preparing a meal or cleaning your shoes or going or that's what that's all supposed to happen but then you still excuse me are still outside right because yeah, you're still Right, you're not looking at it. What, what I never want to do is a trailer where when you're at the sink, you're looking at a wall. Because like, you've just removed yourself from the experience, right? It's one of the things I love about Chris's trailer is that when you go to this backspace here, you're, you, you sort of enter this other world, but you're still outside, right? You're still in it. It's just added to it. And so that's what exactly, you hit it on the head. The panorama thing is about that, that you're inside, but you're also, you're very much watching everything around you. So I like that observation deck. I hadn't thought of it in those terms. That's really cool. Okay. Say it again. For weather, you're still protected. Yes. Still yeah, and I love that. Like I, the every every trailer I've ever worked on, I want to try to make a way where you can like the back door. You can open it and lay in the bed and have the rain coming down, right? But you're not you're protected, but you can still feel little drops smell coming it. in. Yeah, smell yeah. it. I love that word. Yeah. There was a van. I don't know are, if the people are here with the Sprinter that had the van that was all wood inside. Did did we, there have they left? Oh. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. There was a sprinter here today where they had put um, bamboo on the floor and kind of a juniper wood all around inside. Not to mention all the innovative features they have, but when the door opened, it wafted with this beautiful smell. It was like, it was actually more attractive to be inside than outside because it had this wonderful pine or juniper, or I don't know what cedar. wood, that, cedar is what it was. Yeah, it was really lovely. It was like, <laughs> see there. I don't know if it makes you get high or not, but it was pretty like, I definitely wanted to go in there, so. Is that right? Oh, okay. So there's a functional to it, uh, aspect to it as well. Cool. Yeah. What's your next project? Oh, oh gosh, that's a great. So I'm working. So the next project I have, as any. So le let me say it this way: everything when you're a car designer, most of what you work on is seven to ten years in advance. And so there's a lot of things that I can't talk about. It's a very strange job because you're constantly living in the future, looking backwards. So when a new car comes out, it's already ancient to me but so there are so the project I'm working on I can't talk about what I can say is that it, it's an autonomous car um, and I don't yeah and it's and I really I got I, I, I can't wait till I can talk about it because it's so much fun I mean it's just it, they're they're so cool what's happening what's able to happen now that we you know it's like stuff that you dreamt about when you were a kid and it, and it can really happen now. So I'm excited about that project that I can't say anything more than that. And I'm going to stop because I'll start saying stuff and get in trouble. <laughs> Are you focusing more on electric cars or hybrid? I think that they're all the technology. You know, I think it's an interesting time in design because all of these technologies are sort of fighting for a chance. You know, I think, like, is the internal combustion engine dead? No. But is it, is it have the stronghold that it did have? I don't think so. I think that there's so many different powertrains that are greener and more sustainable that are are actually seriously being entertained. So that has been yeah, so at least in the world I'm, I'm, you know, that I live in. Yeah, yeah. The the conversation it's 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 left the conversation point and it's now becoming a, a you know this real a realistic thing. I think yeah, it's a, it's an exciting time to be a car designer. Oh, we have a drone. I can hear it. Oh yay! Oh well. <laughs> Like 
Well, I think that you bring up a good point, and, and I think that um, for Airstream as a company, that's a um, that's a big question. Is wh what's the world look like? Uh, for Airstream in a world where cars drive themselves, where people are already having more of a social experience, you know, what, uh, those are big questions for a trailer company to ask themselves. I feel like, you know, Airstream has this freedom that nobody else has because they have the, the you know, their heritage is to look forward, right? They've become a heritage brand, but they're built on using the most advanced materials from the aviation industry. So there's a lot of freedom there. And also, um, you know, Airstream has love, right? And things with love tend to keep going forward. So, kind of following. yeah, yeah, and kind of I love her going. Where I gotta see this drone? Where is it? Oh, I, wow! Yeah, we should knock it down. <laughs> the, you know that? The, yeah, right. The thing about drones is that they're they're the. I mean, it's cool that that technology's there, and who knows, watching and it's neat. But like, they're so invasive, right? It's so that noise is so terrifying, right? Even though it's it's, it's not gonna bomb us, there's something very alien and like. Yeah, that's right. Like, like we know that we're already being watched by this because this is live. But somehow that's okay. But the the sound is mean. Okay. Anyway, left. So really yes, on the product itself. Yeah. So I love all of the. So I love all of the little um, uh, snaps and hidden nooks. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to get in, but there's a lot of really innovative. Like, oh, I'm glad they thought of me. Moments in in the trailer. Um, you know, one of the holdovers from the original design that Steve Moneypenny drew are these really cool shelving systems up there that are canvas based rather than uh, hard shelves so that when you first of all when they get dirty you can wash them right and secondly as they age you can change them out and stuff again that whole philosophy that as it gets older uh, it still has life beyond the moment when it was pristine in the in the in the dealership um, I you know the bed I, I, d I got to do the bed last night I, I, I posted a funny video <laughs> again of me trying to do the bed because I, I, I am I'm not an expert at it I, in my mind it, w it works one way but now that I'm actually doing it myself it's, it's like oh wow, I look really clumsy doing this but uh, so I, but I love that the fact that the bed folds out into the seats and it's pretty it's a pretty clever use of space if I do say so but yeah yeah. Oh, so that's such a great question because I think it, I don't think I could do one without the other. Um, I, uh, I think that the social space of a trailer really affects what's happening in car design. So there's that, right? You know, designing something that's really about connecting this way. You know, if you think about, I'm just going to say, car, car design is, is, car design isn't like product design, right? It's not like designing something like this or this because it, it, it has to evoke an emotion. Right, where like I feel like a uh, a car designer could probably design a toaster, but I don't know if a toaster designer could design a car. Right, there are different things. There, it's an irrational purchase. It's a very emotional thing, and frankly, car design is all about sex. That's really what it's all about. It's about making you feel something similar to what you feel like when you're with somebody. So the social space of a trailer is about creating this space for to to elevate it to another term for intimate moments. That's really what's happening, and it doesn't, not just sex, but like these moments where you're connecting with somebody and you're in a private bubble. You're in your little safe space in the wilderness, quite literally, right? So that comes into my car design work world in the sense that like, like I want to bring back the bench seat. You know what I mean? Because like the bench seat is how you, is, yeah, intimate. Think about this, like in the, in the 60s when the Mustang came out, Mustang was probably the first car with a bucket seat. And the American divorce rate coincidentally shot up in the 60s and I think it's because of the bucket seat I do and I, I can prove it I, I do I can prove it yeah I, let, let's see if you, if you agree okay so people when they drive in a car have you ever been in a car with your girlfriend boyfriend significant other friend and you've had an argument right and, you, and it's quiet in the car right you know you're not talking to each other anymore right and people can't always say I'm sorry but what you can do is put your arm around the person next to you. And it's okay. It's, you didn't have to say I'm sorry. It, it's good enough. And you can do that in a bench seat, but you can't do that in a bucket seat because you have a division. So I, I firmly believe that if we can bring back the bench seat, we could save American marriages <laughs> and bring the divorce rate down. That's true family values. <laughs> but So that's the answer to your question is this work doing, creating intimate spaces uh, comes into car design and, and it goes back to this uh, uh, everything is connected thing. So you're pretty unique and <laughs> I'm, I'm really just a weird old nerd, is what it is. But no, I, you know, I think I, I think I think we all in in car design, we all 
love this job. I, I think I'm a little unique in the sense that I, I didn't go into car design wanting, I never was interested in muscle cars or, or sports cars. And I, and I really, really love things like this truck and, and social spaces. So that's probably unusual. Um, I, I feel very fortunate in that um, one, you know, one of the great cool things that happened in my career is when I started, N Nissan is the only car studio I know of in the world at the time I was there, they don't do this anymore, they encourage their designers to have their own clients. And so that's why I reached out to Airstream, because I was like, I can do other things. And when you work at a car company, usually they own all your ideas. Anything you think of, anything you say, they own. They own everything. But Nissan decided, or Jerry Hirschberg, who started the Nissan studio in the 70s, decided that he, he would get more out of his designers if he let them have their own clients. So I really ran with that idea. I think, you know, there were uh, designers I worked with, you know, Brenda Park and C. Moneypenny, who I mentioned. All of us really love that kind of thing. But I do think that's something unique in the car industry. Um, it was just a little more unique for me that at one point, uh, you know, after 10 years of being there, I decided, you know, designing for companies like Airstream is more fun than sketching Ultimas. So I finally left and went full time. So. <laughs> No, no, you know, no dissing the Ultima. It's a great car. It's just not, I mean, let's face it, it's not as much fun as, as, a, as a trailer. So, well, let's talk about Yeah. Roebuck just about ready to go out of business. Radio Shack. Uh-huh. And I, I felt a sense of comfort that seeing this project, you know, and some new Airstreams, the RV shows and everything, that they're still in the game. Yeah, I certainly hope so. I think products like this are a good a sign of a good. I think the fact that you know people like Bob Wheeler and Molly and McKay. I don't know how familiar you are with this Airstream team, but you know everybody here, Chris and and Kayla and everybody. Everybody loves this brand, and so there's this commitment to um, never losing sight of where it's been, but how to exist, have it exist in a world that's really changing. Like what you don't want to have happen, I think, is if you look at like blockbuster video to Netflix or Borders book to Amazon, like they fell very quickly because they weren't able to maneuver. And that same paradigm is happening in the car industry. And, and I say car industry because it's merging with the camper industry, really, I think. And so I think you will see um, some car companies disappear that aren't ready for this change. And, and I'll think you, I'll see, I think you will see some RV companies disappear too because they will very quickly become irrelevant. But what I love about Airstream is it's willing to, you know, uh, because it's utter roots, like the very deepest point of its roots, you know, Wally Byam created a company that looked forward. And while it has a vol following of very uh, passionate people that want to keep it what it is and make keep it a re uh, referential and a heritage brand, it breaks through. And it tries things like this, right? Like it tried the first base camp, which really, I wouldn't call that a market success, but it was able to go back and say, there was something there worth mining. Let's, you know, hey Brian, let's design it again and let's really understand this market this time. That's the kind of stuff I think that will let Airstream keep going forward because it's not afraid to try it, you know? And, and I, I won't talk too much about Nest, the other trailer I did for Airstream, because that's the first non-aluminum trailer. But again, that's Airstream also trying, whereas, whereas uh, base camp, uh, keeps the material of Airstream, the aluminum, and takes it to a new form vocabulary, new aesthetic. Nest takes the aesthetic of Airstream and tries a new material. So it looks like an Airstream, right? But, it, but it's not aluminum. So there's a, there's a balance there. And I think, uh, you know, I think that um, hopefully these are products that uh, find uh, a market and, and uh, love and, and help the company to go forward. But the point is, is that they're trying. And if you don't try, that's when you fall apart. Right. You know, that's when you become irrelevant. You, you, you keep charging your late fees at Blockbuster Video until all of a sudden nobody's paying them because they're not coming to your stores anymore. That's, you know, that's the wrong way to do it, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Did you look at it more of like a weekend machine? I live in a full-time. Your original story is about being in the trailer full-time. Yes. Yeah, you know, so, <laughs> so I'm kind of weird. I would live in this thing, right? But that's because I have, right? I've lived in something smaller than this, you know, and I literally lived there for a year. I mean, you know, when you say it sounds very romantic, right? You know, this idea of living in a trailer, but the reality is in the middle of the night, there's no plumbing, there's nowhere to go to the bathroom, there's no shower, you know, th that was really my life in that thing. So 
I would live in this. I don't think that's who this is marketed to. I don't think, I think this is more, you, you two could probably live in it. it would probably, in some ways, they're probably more luxurious than their vans, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, you're like, we would. But yeah, and a shower. Yeah, it actually has a shower. Um, but I think that this is more of a shorter trip thing. I think you could live in something like, I mean, when I walk into Chris's uh, Sterling, I'm like, this is, this is nicer than my home, you know, like, that I actually live in. <laughs> so, but I think that the market, you know, to answer your question, I think this is more about escape. I think it's about adventure. Again, I think it's about, what's really unique with this is I, th I hope that it's for somebody who will make it their own whereas um, the Airstream as it stands is such a beautiful thing that I find it doesn't usually get modified aesthetically inside they do but outside it stays this sort of you know golden or silver Twinkie right and I mean that in the best way Airstream people I love the silver Twinkie but that's how it looks like whereas this I really hope people customize it make it their own you know beat it up put racks on it I don't, even, I don't even care if they paint it, you know, try patterns on it and stuff. I hope that they do that. So we shall see. We shall see. So, well, if that's all the questions, uh, we can break it down. Oh, yeah, we should go in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay.